Hello, I'm CU Challenge Lipton. I'm the Executive Director of the Department of Art, Design and Music at Queen's University of Charlotte um, in North Carolina. And this is my presentation for the 15th International Conference on the Arts and Society that was to be held at the National University of Ireland in Galway, but unfortunately due to COVID-19 this June, it's online. My paper addresses the conference's 2020 special focus of Against the Grain, Arts and the Crisis of Democracy. The title of my paper is Fully Awake, Art Education as a Catalyst for Democracy, the Need for a Black Mountain College Approach. So I'm gonna share my PowerPoint with you now. Today's students are the most technologically connected in history, yet conversation is being sacrificed for connection and communication, compromising self-reflection, risk and engagement. They need to be fully awake. The need for an education through the arts has never been greater. The teaching example of the experimental Black Mountain College of North Carolina from 1933 to 1956 is once again relevant and its dedication to educational and artistic experimentation, cross-disciplinary collaboration and the fostering of individuality with the end of creating a democratic world in which artistic education involves citizenship. A liberal arts education is again the example of the future as a directive to action the development of character and education for life as an active citizen engaged in social change. Black Mountain College was characterized by its isolated rural location in the Black Mountains, in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina near Asheville, its communal living arrangements and unconventional faculty. Its teaching was inspired though by a tradition of liberal arts education at schools like Oxford University in England, where John Andrew Rice, its founder, had been a Rhodes Scholar. It advocated for a Socratic approach to teaching in which questions were more important than answers, fostering critical thinking. Experimentation and independence were central to this way of learning. In his memoir, I Came Out of the 18th Century, Rice described Oxford as a place where no incarceration of the mind existed. Nowhere had he experienced such a spirit of free inquiry. In Rice's words, the Socratic direction to teach the young people to how to become, not how to be philosophers, and to show them that their quest for certainty, the only thing in which they can really rely with assurance, is the experience of the quest. And here is Rice at Black Mountain in discussion with students. At Oxford, Rice encountered a different approach to education than anything he had experienced. There were no required textbooks, no prescribed courses. Lecturers and tutors were the heart of the system, with students attending whichever lectures they chose to. The purpose was to arouse a critical attitude upon the part of the student, who would be given little credit for the parrot-like recital of someone else, what someone else had written. Scholarship required self-discipline and a capacity for independent study. Rice's classes in Greek and Latin became renowned throughout the university for thought-provoking discussions. As one student said later, he had a way of teaching us to think for ourselves. We were reading the classics for real questions to be answered, not just for things to be studied for exams. Rice went on to teach at Rollins University in Florida, where he became a, a harsh and outspoken critic of the school and American education generally, and was forced to resign along with his colleagues. Together, they formed Black Mountain College of North Carolina on September 25th, 1933. Rice's goal was to implement an innovative um, philosophy of education that he had learned at Oxford, augmented by progressive educator John Dewey. This included the central place of artistic experience and emotional development to learning in all disciplines, as well as the need for democratic governance shared between faculty and students. What distinguished Black Mountain College was the level to which the arts were
were elevated and the idea of using creative experiences to enhance all areas of academic interest. Every student experienced the arts, whether they were an aspiring artist or scientist. During a time of totalitarianism in Europe, experiment and democracy were reaffirmed in the mountains of North Carolina. In politics, each person would have a voice in decision-making. In education, it meant the individual's realization of their full abilities. In art creation, it meant a whole new trend that led to America's position at the center of modernism in the arts. Black Mountain College boasted a multicultural faculty, including many emigres fleeing Nazi Europe. In Black Mountain College, they found political, social, and artistic freedom. This brought great diversity to the campus, but was an issue to the local people. Although the democratically op operated college took an apolitical position, it quickly acquired a communist reputation. Black Mountain College was located in a conservative part of the country and lived through times of McCarthyism, civil unrest, and segregation with the Jim Crow laws in the South. It was the first school to integrate in 1944 and welcome African-American students and teachers 10 years before Brown versus Board of Education. Many complaints about the school led to frequent investigations by the FBI. In 1915, under the Freedom of Information Act, it emerged that Black Mountain College and several of its professors had indeed been investigated by the FBI. Black Mountain College's reputation as progressive and unconventional brought the attention of the FBI to the college itself under the pretense of compliance with GI Bill regulations. They had concerns that what was going on in the college might entail a threat to, quote, internal security. The FBI inquiry extended to faculty. Paul Radin, the anthropologist, was a self-professed radical leftist, a communist operative, a staunch advocate for racial integration, and indeed a communist past member. In the mid-1940s, the Bureau went so far, far as to recruit a secret informant who attended Radin's classes. Charles Olson, the rector of the school later on and, um, and a literary figure, was investigated at least twice in 1952 and 56. He claimed that McCarthyism heightened the interest of young people in communism and speculated that perhaps they felt safer hiding out in the mountains. The FBI special agent in charge in Charlotte reported to Director Edgar Hoover on May 31st, 1956 in a memo stating, quote, a student may do nothing all day in the middle of the night, may decide he wants to paint or write, which he does, and he may call upon the teachers at this time for guidance. In one of its final reports, the FBI summed up a key reason it had cast a wary eye on the college. The FBI gravely noted, quote, they advised that everything is left to the desires of the individual. This growing reputation both escalated local suspicions and made recruiting students and raising money very difficult. There were also a number of confessed homosexual and bisexual students and faculty who were strongly frowned upon by locals who were devout Christian fundamentalists with very conservative views. When Black Mountain College started its program of integration with five black students enrolled, a number of fires were set in the surrounding woods by outraged locals, a sharp reminder to them that segregation was still the way of the South. There, these were, there were those among the local residents though who enjoyed what the college had to offer, attending unsegregated concerts, drama productions, and lectures on the Black Mountain College campus. At Black Mountain College, the principles of democracy were to be applied not just to the classroom, as was usually the case in progressive schools, but to the entire structure of the college. There were to be no legal controls from the outside, no board of trustees, the board was called the Board of Fellows, elected from the faculty and by the faculty, eminent educators, scientists, and artists, to increase the college's credibility to the outside world, although it had to, no legal authority. The faculty had control over educational policy, student life, the finances of the college, the hiring and firing of faculty, as well as the curriculum. The college was owned and administered by the faculty. 
student officers, attended meetings, and in 1937, the student was made member of the board. Just as Black Mountain College sought to return to the faculty control of educational policy, it sought to return to students' responsibility for their own education through a system of self-directed study. At Black Mountain, students were encouraged to take classes in a variety of areas, studying what was most valuable to them. They decided when they were ready to take comprehensive exams and graduate. Grades were kept solely for transfer purposes. Advancement was based on individual readiness, not on the completion of course units. Rice identified with artists whom he felt sought to expand understanding with creativity and experience rather than to ascertain knowledge through control and experimentation. Art was a discipline that helped one to see, to learn, to listen, to make choices. Rice's strong methodological bias for experience in and out of the college classroom was summarized in a later statement, to read a play is good, to see a play is better, but to act in a play is to realize the subtle relationship between sound and movement. The progressive education movement in America had already begun to lend respectability to the arts as a serious academic endeavor. What would distinguish Black Mountain College commitment to the arts was the level to which the practice of art was elevated and the idea of using creative experience to enhance any area of professional or academic interest. Every student experienced the arts, whether expiring artist or biologist. To Rice, the practice of art was the best way to internalize importance of method and process over substance and results. The arts were vital classes for beginning students through which a student would learn not just information, but a method of dealing with that information. At Black Mountain College, education was a preparation for life to learn to make intelligent discriminating decisions and develop a capacity for initiative and independence. Education was an active process, not the passive absorption of information. As Rice stated, nearly every man is a bit of an artist, at least potentially a person of imagination, which can be developed. There is but one way to develop, to teach method, not content, to emphasize process, not results. Art is a discipline that helped one to see, to learn, to listen, to make choices. Rice was troubled by the common expression to get an education, for education could only be experienced. He was particularly distressed by what he called head stuffing or spoon feeding in the arts, for these subjects were the best training grounds for imagination, which was the chief distinction of man. An examination of the works created by Black Mountain artists reveals the production of such an education, the ability to both build on and break from the past, to create a future for the visual arts that lay at the heart of the greater liberal arts community. It was in this educational climate that the impact of American artistic talent was recognized worldwide, from John Cage to Merce Cunningham, Ruth Sauer, Jacob Lawrence, and Robert Rauschenberg. The challenge to find an art instructor in 1933 to guide the drawing and painting classes was answered by Joseph Albus, who fled Nazi Germany in the 1930s and was to impact the most influential and far-reaching art education programs of the 20th century. The experimental nature of Black Mountain College with its pioneering spirit appealed to Albus as an extension of the Bauhaus in Germany, where excellence in teaching, community in learning, and experimentation in the arts were explored. Under founder Walter Gropius in 1919, this design institute turned its back on German higher education. Teachers were masters and students apprentices in a guild-like workshop system. The community of artists, architects, printers, Graphic designers, stage decorators shared interdisciplinary learning in an art theory and design principles as at Black Mountain College. They also shared extracurricular concerts, plays, dances, and exhibitions. Albus was noted at the Bauhaus for connecting learning about art to learning to question and criticize. 
Albus distinguished between the industriousness of a student who mindlessly memorizes facts, regurgitating them on exams, and the dynamic possession of a student for whom experience and action is an integral part of learning. His basic design course encouraged a process of forming out of material like paper, wire, leaves, and dirt. The idea was to not copy something, but to attain a feeling for material by solving problems and breaking old habits. For Albus, seeing encompassed not only the optical experience, but also the integral part of vision. He realized one could not teach imagination, but felt that its development could be aided by teaching observation and comparison. To open eyes and minds. The content of Albus's curriculum was a study of the elements of form, its methods one of discovery and invention, with a goal of seeing and perceiving. Through a study of the elements of form, he hoped to save students from imitation and develop independence, critical ability, and discipline. In creative work, this meant expressing thoughts and feelings through the language of form, for every perceivable thing has form. To understand the meaning of form is to the indispensable preliminary condition of culture. Rice and Albus agreed on the importance of educating the whole person. The Socratic approach to teaching encouraged autonomy. Black Mountain College was a means and the end was the individual. At Black Mountain College, students spoke of how Joseph Albus asked us to look, to figure out what made each idea work, to trust our own perceptions. Black Mountain College was not about isolated examples or instances of art within the confines of the classroom, but seeing all life as art. At Black Mountain College, education was a preparation for life to learn to make intelligent, discriminating decisions and develop a capacity for initiative and independence. The 1933 College Catalogue described how the individual was fostered. The student, by being sensitized to movement, form, sound, gets a firmer control of himself and his environment. Black Mountain College was not an art school though, but a place for the arts in the curriculum to inspire all students to artistry in every area of life and every professional pursuit. In the true liberal arts tradition, the ideal of American experimental education. Albus brought a European modernism opposed to the traditional academic European ideal in art and influenced more by pre-Columbian, Mexican and Central American art. And he brought this to the progressive ideals of Black Mountain College, a self-conscious reactionary movement to social, political and industrial changes around the turn of the 20th century. Black Mountain College was one of the few schools sincerely dedicated to educational and artistic experimentation. With a board of directors that included Albert Einstein, Black Mountain College had become the ideal of American experimental education. Its concentration on cross genre arts education would influence the programs of many American institutions. An examination of the works created by students of Albus reveals the product of such an education, the ability to both build on and break from the past to create a future for the visual arts. By 1956, the school had run its course. Black Mountain College had existed on its own terms and on its own terms had succeeded in expanding the possibilities of American education. Black Mountain College was not about isolated examples or instances of art within the confines of the classroom, but seeing all life as art. Education should reflect life to learn to make intelligent, discriminating decisions and develop a capacity for initiative and independence in order to become active citizens involved in a conceptual world. In today's climate of social, political, and even medical unrest, the educational example of Black Mountain College is again essential. Education must be training in assuming responsibility. The first step in the process is to make the student aware of himself and his capacities to know himself. As educators, we must begin 
with the transformation of the classroom into a community of learners engaged in their own education. Autonomous thinking is then possible. For this to occur, student-led discussion and critical reflection are essential. Through discourse, learners are able to validate what is being communicated to them. This dialogue provides the opportunity to critically examine evidence, arguments, and alternate points of view, which foster collaborative learning. Group projects help establish an environment of trust and care and facilitate the development of relationships among learners, which is fundamental to promote transformative learning. Students must be encouraged to take time to examine and reflect and to foster self-awareness through this process. Primary research, including archival sources, helps students find meaning in the midst of vast amounts of information and find the connections that transform information into useful and valuable knowledge. Maintaining sketchbooks is also a powerful tool that encourages introspection and self-discovery. It is a space for personal reflection and visual expression. There is a strong need for reinvigorating creativity in the educational system to facilitate students' development in making unusual connections, in seeing analogies and relationships between ideas or objects that have not previously been related. In studying the creative process, students develop critical and creative thinking and gain a theoretical and practical understanding of aesthetic judgment. Students are taught to reflect, to take risks, to think differently, to ask questions, to reject standard answers, and to see the nuances of things. It is, in Belgian painter René Magritte's words, the art of thinking. We are unable to grow greater understanding of our true nature unless we take the time to examine and reflect upon our lives. Socrates asserted that the unexamined life is not worth living. Examining our life reveals patterns of behavior. Unless we become aware of these patterns, much of our life is unconscious repetition. We need to be awakened. The process of seeing, knowing, and discovering often is uncomfortable, even painful, physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. But growth and change do not occur without it. For true and real change to happen, we need to experience discomfort in some way, shape, or form. We need to experience a discomfort that awakens us to a moment of self-discovery. It's about finding meaning in the midst of vast amounts of information. It's about finding the connections that transform information into useful and valuable knowledge. College students generally begin their studies by exploring various areas of learning, discovering their own inclinations, abilities, and weaknesses, and settle into a major of choice. But students must be challenged to take risks, to sign up for classes outside of their major, classes which make them feel less comfortable. As Sir Ken Robinson states, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. They must learn a new skill, be it playing the piano, painting, or acting in a play, they will then look at things in ways they had never imagined. If we encourage our students to take risks, to venture out of their comfort zone, faculty must also do so. The educator serves as a role model by demonstrating a willingness to learn and change. The Black Mountain College was run as a model for democracy in education and one that more schools should adopt today. It was a total experience. As one student said, I know that every moment there seemed alive in a way that few have since. Black Mountain College was a holistic approach to education and life. M.C. Richards, ceramics teacher at Black Mountain College, claimed that it was the combination of intimacy, spontaneity, avant-garde and seriousness, high standards and commitment. We were making something new together. What they were making was new citizens, a democratic approach to education that was reflected in their approach to life during a time when democracy was scarce and in this way, particularly, Black Mountain College remains relevant today. 
John Dewey, whose philosophy inspired the foundation of the school, insisted that the idea of democracy was not as political system, but as a way of life, evident as Black Mountain College was internally self-governing based on group meetings, shared deliberation and consensus, what Dewey referred to as a living example of democracy in action, an example we must follow today. Thank you.